This episode of my layout design series using Train Sim World 2 shows you how to take measurements, design a track plan, and much more. Before we start, I have to state that I'm not sponsored by Dovetail Games and I've purchased all the software used in this series. This video shows you how to measure distances in the simulation and how to create a track plan. If you haven't seen my previous video on how to use TrainSim World 2 for model railway design, check it out here. In the last video, I chose to model Duran Station on the Schnell Fastracker route in TrainSim World 2. Checking available rolling stock meant that the layout would be N scale. Having chosen the location and the scale, the first challenge is to measure the distance across the whole station area. The software does not provide any measuring devices, such as rulers, so some lateral thinking was required. If you look in the top right of the display, you will see a green signal marker with a distance in metres beside it. The signal in question is at the end of the platform. As the train approaches, the distance counts down to zero. Using this distance countdown feature, I measured the diameter of the old turntable included as a feature in the main platform. I created a simple single loco scenario beside platform 1. I ran a loco towards the signal noting the distance at both extremities of the turntable. Subtracting one from the other, the turntable diameter measures 24 metres. Being able to measure along the track is useful, but it still doesn't allow you to measure the width of the platforms, for example. Another method is required. This is where a feature of the underlying software that Dovetail Games use on their latest generation of simulation code becomes very useful. TrainSim World 2 is built on a third-party graphics program called Unreal Engine from Epic Games. One of the features of the Unreal Engine is first-person simulation. This is a major component of modern computer games. In first-person simulation, a camera is positioned at the eye height of you, the character. You then see the graphical surface as if you are walking through it. Dovetail Games never had this feature in their previous train simulator, so they decided to incorporate the mode into the next generation of their game. You access first person simulation through the Explore on Foot menu option. When you select the Explore on Foot option, you can select a start location and a time. You move around the simulation surface using cursor keys on the PC or joystick controls on a console controller. Movement is two speeds, so called walk and a faster pace called run, which is accessed by pressing the shift key on the PC or the RT key on a console controller whilst moving. An explore speed doesn't vary, which means if we can determine how far we travel in a given time period, we have a measuring device. Remember, we measured the diameter of the turntable on platform 1 to be 24 metres. If we now walk and run across the turntable and measure how long it takes, we can arrive at a meters per second speed. Using the clock in the bottom right of the display, let's time how long it takes to walk across the turntable. Here is that measurement. We traverse 24 meters in 8 seconds, giving a walk pace of 3 meters per second. Run is twice that speed at 6 meters per second. Now let's measure the width of the platform and tracks. Starting at one edge, wait till the clock reaches a suitable round number like 0, 10, 20 etc. and then walk across the platform to the other edge. Multiply the time taken by 3 to get the distance travelled in meters. Don't forget these are real world units. So now multiply the distance by a thousand to get millimetres and divide by 160, the ratio for n scale. And that is the distance in millimetres on the layout.
Let's now convert our measurements into a track plan. I use track planning software called AnyRail, which you may have seen in some of my previous videos. I have opted for a board size of 1200 by 600 millimeters, or 4 feet by 2 feet old school. The track is laid out on the boards to ensure no points overlap a board join. The right hand bridge is added to give a measuring reference. Platforms are drawn and added. The chosen track is Pico Code 55 with concrete sleepers. Reference is made to the route plan provided by the software and also views of the track as laid out in the simulation. Thought now has to be given to the rest of the layout. Do you build a looping continuous run with a fiddle yard or do you have an end-to-end -end layout? With a single run of boards, a back scene is necessary, attached to the rear of the station. There is another solution, however, and that is to incorporate the real-world storage facility as a fiddle yard. Four extra boards are added at the rear, and the fiddle yard is built onto the area provided. This, I think, makes a far more interesting layout from the public point of view. By adopting this design, an end-to-end -end layout becomes the obvious choice. Traverses at both ends mean that full trains don't have to be turned, since all the passenger trains operate in both directions. The only exception is freight traffic. The loco can be lifted by the operator from one end of the train to the other before a return journey. In terms of control, DCC seems to be the obvious choice for me, with two or possibly three operators. There would be an operator at each end with a third situated at the front to control the front fiddle yard and interact with the public. In the next episode I'll cover bridge and building construction and using first person simulation discover details for the layout. Check out some of my other content, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you there.